Hi, this is Hannah. This is blog number five for Com 45. And this week, we're looking at evidence and sources in our rhetorical act chapter for this week, which is chapter four, which is resources of evidence. And in this chapter, the book talks about how we should look at our sources when we're thinking about using them for our writing. And when we look at these sources, we should think about what are their strengths, what are their limitations, and what psychological powers they have, which is what effect it will have on your readers and how it will support your argument in your essay. And I will be talking about how each um, author for the pop culture essays uses evidence, like what kind of evidence that they use and how this helped their argument. So the first pop culture essay was Television Addiction is No Mere Metaphor by Robert Kuby and Mahali Sizzant Mahali. And this essay was pretty long. It was about TV addiction. It starts off by defining what qualifies as an addiction. And this is being like unable, you're unable to stop that habit and you feel withdrawal when you do try to stop and that you engage in it so much that it causes you to lose your relationships with other people, whether it be family or friends or co-workers. And throughout the essay, the authors used a lot of studies, so like scientific experiments and studies done by, like, they really pointed out, like, what university the researchers from or what university the study was being done at and I think they did this to show their credibility that it's like really smart people and scientists that are doing these studies to prove their points and one of the studies was done on why we continue to watch TV and why we're so addicted and um, they found that we feel relaxed when we watch TV so we keep watching TV even if we're bored of whatever we're watching because we just feel so relaxed and we don't want to stop and this makes a lot of sense to me because um, TV is relaxing. Like you're just sitting there in your bed or on your couch and chilling and you're watching whatever it is you're watching. Um, another study was done on how light viewers, so people who didn't watch TV as much, were actually more happy and less anxious than pe heavy viewers, which is would be people who are addicted to TV. And then there was another study done on families who basically stopped TV time. And when the families did this, there was a like high increase in conflict within each other just because they didn't have TV anymore. And the authors also say that the same thing applies to video games and computers. And I think the authors did a really good job with their evidence because all of their like the, all the studies and articles that they talked about were like very like scientific and well like planned out studies to prove the causation and I also agree with them that like TV addiction is getting really out of hand like I know like every once in a while I'll have like a lazy weekend where I'll binge watch TV but like other than that like I really try to keep myself from going on like Netflix and stuff because it really keeps me from being productive and like I don't want to do that to myself and fall into those habits. The next essay is Girls 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 by Roxanne Gay and this essay was basically talking about how women are portrayed on TV and like usually we're portrayed as like dramatic and living messy lives like with a lot lots of friends who are also messy like and the women on tv shows usually end up with older men and they're just all living like these fun and dramatic and perfect lives and she brings up the show girls which is on hbo and she says it's like different from previous portrayals of women on TV because the main character has like a realistic body and like she eats on TV and I thought that was interesting because I never really realized that like we don't see women eating on media like that and she also like points out that there's like um, an amount of humiliation on the TV show and usually like 
women are living these perfect little lives on TV. And she talks about how, like, every girl has a TV show that's for them that they relate to. And girls on HBO may not be the one that you may relate to, but this is the one that she talks about. And she also talks about lack of racial representation of women on TV. There really isn't a lot of women on color of color on TV. And when there is, they're like usually portrayed in really stereotypical ways and not as regular women like all their like characteristics are usually based around the fact that they're a woman of color so I really liked her essay because I agree with a lot of her points and as for evidence she basically just used the tv show as a reference throughout the whole essay since her essay was mainly about the tv show and she also talked about her personal experiences with like women in media the next essay is Apocalyptic Strain in Pop Culture, The American Nightmare Becomes the American Dream by Paul Cantor. And in this essay, he talks about how apocalyptic movies are taking over pop culture. So like zombie movies or like doomsday, the end of the world, like crazy natural disaster movies. And some examples would be like The Walking Dead or... Um, 2012 and he talks about how like the American dream usually equates to like having a family and that this requires an education and a career and money and like this this and like that's like a lot of hard work and planning that we need to put into and what the reason why apocalyptic like like movies have been become so popular is because these movies show things like living on the edge and self resilience like no control from the government and we're into these things according to him because we have this desire to experience these things and like stray away from that path of education career money and then family and for evidence, throughout the essay, he was just giving examples of apocalyptic media, especially The Walking Dead and Falling Skies. Like, he would reference to them a lot to support his argument. And then the last pop culture essay was Netflix and the Future of Television by Ken Auletta. And in this essay, um, the author talks about how Netflix is like a new streaming like website for movies and TV shows and it's putting like the rental like companies out of business like Blockbuster and Redbox and like we know this because all of those have like closed all their stores in the past few years and he's saying that Netflix has become so big that they have more streamers than YouTube and it's like really popular and they don't have ads, which like draws a lot of people into it, even though you have to pay a monthly fee. And he's saying that Netflix has become so successful that they create their own shows. And this is impacting cable networks like Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS, like all of those big cable company, cable network companies. And now like in order to like save their shows like ABC and CBS and Fox and all of them make deals with Netflix to allow Netflix to have their shows on Netflix for streamers to watch and in return like Netflix will pay these cable networks to have their shows so it goes back and forth and he base he sums it up as Netflix is a friend and a competitor because these cable companies can use Netflix to make money but at the same time Netflix is drawing viewers away from them and he talks about ads too and Netflix doesn't have ads and even though like cable TV still has ads like they're not really working because people are now recording their shows in advance and they'll just fast forward through those ads and as of evidence, um, throughout his essay, he quotes CEOs from the industry, like from Netflix and like CEOs of companies like Fox and CBS. So I think like that supports his argument because these people are pretty 
credible and they have expertise in like this like the film industry because they are part of that industry and yeah that's it for vlog number five